So we're back again for my sixth year of my best and worst screen protector video. This one's going to be for the brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra. I also want to give a huge thank you to everybody who left me a comment in last year's video. Thank you so much for all your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're new here and you like what I'm doing, make sure you smash that like button because it really helps out the channel. You're not going to want to miss any part of this video because I will be doing a drop and a scratch test for each one of these screen protectors to let you know which ones are the worst and which ones I think are worth your time. I will also be putting product links and timestamps in the video description because this is going to be a lengthy video, but stick with me because I guarantee you're going to find one screen protector here you're going to absolutely love. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video because I will be telling you which one of these screen protectors I think are the absolute best. And in case you're interested, I will also be doing a best and worst cases video for the S24 Ultra. I'll also put a link in the video description for that too. So grab your snacks, sit back and relax, and enjoy the video. So before we begin, I just want to let you know that even though I won't be showing this to you for every single screen protector, I will be cleaning the screen off with an alcohol wipe and then thoroughly drying it off before every single installation. And then here we have the Taurus Diamond Shield Tempered Glass Screen Protector. A Taurus case and their Diamond Shield Screen Protector are a pairing you can trust to protect your brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's super easy to install and you can safeguard your phone in three simple steps. So we get an installation packet with an extra screen protector. You also get a guide with a built-in screen protector all ready to go. And there's a squeegee on the underside of the kit. First, thoroughly clean off your screen and dry it off. Take your screen protector, making sure the top goes towards the camera on the phone. Just press it over the top of your phone, just like this. Hold on to the guide. Pull out the tab, and then wait for the screen protector to adhere to the screen. Then remove the guide from your phone. And then peel off the top protector. And you're all set. It's just that easy. And if by chance you do have some bubbles, which I have this one little one in the corner here, you can easily use your squeegee to just kind of push that out. Now for the specifications of the screen protector, it has all around coverage with 9H hardness. It's powered by aerospace material protection. It features a nanoscale pressure and a resilient structure. It's 100% clear and it unlocks super fast with the in-display fingerprint sensor and also works great with the S Pen. So it does have a cutout on the top for the selfie camera, so you don't have to worry about it not working with your facial recognition or messing up your selfie pictures. And if you have problems with your in-display fingerprint sensor, just re-register your fingerprints and turn up the sensitivity for the display. So let's put in our fingerprints. All right, so fingerprints are inputted. Now let's test them out. A second it takes to unlock. Let's test it out. One, <laughs> one second. That's incredible. Yeah, so the fingerprint sensor is working perfectly fine with the screen. Again, like I said, it is crystal clear. The edges of the screen protector are also rounded off, so they feel nice and smooth. No issues with touch. Everything's working perfectly fine on the phone. You can access the top and the bottom very easily. As far as fingerprints, it picks up minor fingerprints and you can very easily wipe those away with very minimal effort. As far as the touch goes, the glass feels just as smooth as the glass on the phone itself. Now let's put it in one of our cases. This is the Taurus O-Stand case. If we look at it from the side, again, you can see there's still a slight raised edge, even with the tempered glass screen protector on the front of the phone. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen writes nice and smooth on the screen. There's absolutely no lag. It is, it is so spot on. Like, look at how slowly and how accurately you can write on this screen. So there's absolutely no problems using the S Pen with this tempered glass. 
And there's also a slight gap all the way around the phone for case compatibility as well. It fits perfectly within this case. I don't see any lifting, no bubbles, and it doesn't touch the case itself. There's such a small gap, but that's what you want. You want it to cover as most of the screen that you can, so that's less of a place for any dust or lint to collect. Now let's take a look at the screen as if you were looking at it through lenses of polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a rainbow effect on the screen, but you can still easily see what's on the screen. It's just something to note. And if you're wondering how well the S Pen works with the case because of the magnet on the back, again, I see absolutely no issues with writing on the screen whatsoever. As you can see, it writes all over the place. It doesn't write up at the top because that's not a writable area, but anywhere else on the screen, there's absolutely no issues. So everything's looking great so far with the tempered glass. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So we're going to be dropping a 2.4 ounce steel metal ball at a starting height of two feet. If the screen protector doesn't crack, we'll move it up foot by foot until it eventually does. So here we go at two feet, moving on to three feet, four feet, moving up to five feet, six feet, seven feet, eight feet. Eight and a half feet. This is the highest I can go. So it never actually cracked. We just have this little marking on the underside of the screen. So this screen protector stood up to an eight and a half foot drop and still didn't crack. It just kind of deformed the uh, adhesive underneath the screen a little bit, but you can't even feel it if you run your finger over the glass. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're going to start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we take a look at the screen, you can see that there are no scratches at the number five. There are super light at the number six and a little deeper at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass. So I am definitely impressed with this screen protector. It was really easy to install. It seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It withstood an eight and a half foot drop and scratch resistance also seems to be a little better than regular tempered glass. Then here we have Whitestone Dome's UV Gen Film. So we get two screen protectors, some installation pieces, two installation packets, and a UV light for curing. Now before you start your installation, you want to plug your UV light in to any power adapter you can find that uses USB Type-C just to make sure it works because if it doesn't, you're not going to be able to install the screen protector properly. Also make sure before you do this installation that you're not doing it in direct sunlight because it will cure the screen protector prematurely. So the first thing you want to do is to clean off your screen really well, then dry it off and take one of your little foam pads. We're going to put it down on your surface so you have something to push the phone against. Just like that. Then take your little installation guide, making sure that the posts are pointing upward and you're using the little little C connection for the bottom of your phone. Just push that into the charging port on the bottom of the phone. Then take one of your screen protectors. You want to peel off the underside of the protector, making sure the little camera hole is going towards the camera on your phone. Then line up the holes on the bottom of the guide with the posts. Push that into place. Don't let the screen protector touch the phone. Then you want to line this up with the phone and the camera the best you can. Then once you have it in place, just get your squeegee and try to get out as much bubbles as you can. 
Then take your squeegee, put it behind the dotted line on the bottom, lift up on the guide, and we're gonna squeegee out the top part of the screen protector up and over your screen, just like that. Then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Just lift up the guide from the posts and remove the guide. Then put your squeegee behind the dotted line again, lift up on the, the screen protector, make sure it goes up and over your screen, your screen and just squeegee it out. Then we can peel off the top protector from the screen. And then very gently squeegee out any bubbles if you have any. I've got a, a few up at the top here. All right, once you're done with that, we're gonna plug in our UV light and we're going to cure the top, middle, and bottom of the screen for 60 seconds each. So just place your UV light over the screen and then double press the little power button for 60 seconds. Then move on to the middle, 60 seconds again. And then 60 seconds at the bottom. All right, now that that's done, let's take a look at the screen protector. So installation looks pretty nice. I do have a couple bubbles at the top of the screen and just a few at the bottom here. Hopefully those should disappear within a day or two. As far as the touch goes, super smooth, like silk. It might even be smoother than the screen that's on the phone. So that feels really nice. It's got a cutout for our front camera there, so that's we also have a cutout for the front camera so you don't have to worry about any of your pictures getting messed up because of the screen protector. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints as you can see on the screen, but because it's so smooth, you can very easily just wipe those away. The screen does also have an anti-fingerprint coating as well. So now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine. There is just an ever so slight bit of resistance, but I particularly like that when I'm when I'm writing because it's kind of true to life. Yeah, everything's working fine with the S Pen, so that's nice. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. And if you are having problems with your fingerprints, just re-register them and maybe even turn the sensitivity on for the display. As you can see, the screen protector is crystal clear. Also works perfectly fine with touch. No issues with getting to the top notification bar, the bottom of the screen. Everything's working fine. So now let's see what the screen would look like if you're using polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect. If you're looking at the screen dead on, it's not that bad, but if you, you know, turn the phone or twist it around, the rainbow effect changes. But not too bad. So now let's put it in our case. Right, so I don't see any lifting on the screen protector. It seems to come right up to the edge of the case itself. So it may or may not be case friendly with other cases, but it works perfectly fine with the Whitestone Dome Lappy case. So everything's looking good so far. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically film screen protectors start to scratch around a Mohs number two, which is simply just plastic. So we're gonna start off with that and then we'll move on to the harder material, which is copper at a number three. Then we'll move on to the number three. As you can see immediately, it starts to scratch the screen and that is not going to heal. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number two, but they're deeper at the number three. So this screen protector's scratch resistance is a little better than regular film screen protectors. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also seems to work really well with the S Pen and in-display fingerprint sensor. 
As far as case compatibility, it did seem to work perfectly fine with the Whitestone Dome Lappy case, but there might be some cases out there that it won't be compatible with. Now there is no drop protection because it is a film screen protector, but scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular film screen protectors. And if you want to remove the screen protector, it's really easy. All I need to do is lift up on one of the edges here and then simply peel it off. And as you can see, your screen is undamaged. And then here we have the Whitestone Dome Glass EA. Here we get two tempered glass screen protectors with guides and an installation packet. So first clean off your screen really well with the alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure the Galaxy S24 Ultra lettering is going towards the camera on your phone. We're gonna peel off the underside protector and then just simply place the whole thing over your phone just like this and press it into place. Now the screen protector may start to adhere to your screen, but you can run your finger across the middle and up the middle like that. Then hold down on the guide and we're gonna peel up the middle sticker. Then lift up on the guide. Now you might have a little bubble like I do here, but you can either use your finger or if you have a squeegee or something like that to try to just push it out. So I was very easily able to get that bubble out and this is also a full coverage screen protector so it does cover your camera on the front. So we're gonna test that out. But there also does seem to be a very slight gap all the way around the phone so it might be case compatible with most cases. As far as touch goes on the screen, nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints, but the screen also does have an oleophobic coating on it, which allows the fingerprints to be easily wiped away. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. Yeah, so again, if you do have problems with your fingerprints, just re-register them and maybe turn the sensitivity up on the display. As you can see, the screen is also crystal clear, touch working perfectly fine, no issues there. Now let's see what the screen looks like as if you were looking at it through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect. It's not horrible, even if you turn the phone. So that's definitely a plus. Now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine on the screen. There is a bit of resistance between the rubber nib on the S Pen and the glass, but the S Pen works perfectly fine on the screen. And the edges of the glass are also rounded off so it's nice and smooth. So let's put our phone inside of our case. So it still seems like there is a bit of a gap around the edge of the phone. So the screen protector is not touching the case at all. There's no lifting, no bubbles. So the screen protector should be case compatible with most cases. So let's take a look at our camera. So the camera looks pretty clear to me. I don't see any issues, so you shouldn't have any problems with taking photos or videos with the front camera. So everything's looking good so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. Five feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a five foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically regular tempered glass starts to scratch around the Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with number five. And move on to a number six. And then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five and I really don't see any at the number six either. If they're there, they're almost invisible. 
And then for the number seven, as you can see, it's definitely a lot more noticeable. So scratch resistance seems to be reg so scratch resistance seems to be better than regular tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also does seem to be case friendly. It lasted up until a five foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be better than regular tempered glass. And then here we have Whitestone Dome's premium dome glass screen protector. So first off, we get a UV light and you wanna make sure that this works before you start the installation. It uses USB type C, so you, all you need to do is plug it into like a phone adapter or some other charger that uses USB type C to see if it works. So I'll plug this in and press the power button and we're good to go. We get three vials of adhesive, some port cover stickers, our installation packet, a cover for our fingerprint sensor, an installation guide, and two tempered glass screen protectors. So first take your installation tray and remove the little bridge from there. We need to install this little plastic piece. All you need to do is simply press it into the little slot here until you hear a little click. Then we're gonna install these felt pads on each side of the, the guide. We also need to take a third one out of our installation packet and we're going to install it on the bottom here. So the whole installation guide should look like this. Then take this little black piece, we want to stick it inside this little piece here. Make sure it slides freely in and out because it's going to be important later on. Next we need to take our little port stickers and cover all the ports and buttons on our phone. Take out your S Pen, put that off to the side. And when you're done covering all the ports and buttons, it should look something like this. So now we're going to clean off the screen of our phone using your alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then we're going to take our installation tray, making sure that this little piece up here with the S24 signifier goes towards the camera on your phone. We're just going to press this over our phone, press down. You want to make sure the screen is touching these arrows on each side of the guide. Then you're going to take your speaker grill sticker, peel that off very carefully, and we're going to put that over this plastic piece here, making sure the speaker grill gets covered, and I'd use this little black piece to kind of push down the sticker. So when you're done, this sticker should totally be covering your speaker grill on your phone. So then take your bridge, put it into the two slots on the guide just like this. Take your black piece, slide it into that slot again, right above your sticker. Take one of your valves of adhesive, we're going to undo the white cap. Place it inside the little hole here and undo the black cap. All the liquid adhesive will flow onto the screen of the phone. Put the black cap back on, take this out, put the white cap back on and then throw this away. Remove the bridge, then get your screen protector. We're going to remove the protector sticker underneath the screen protector. Place the bottom down onto the screen and let the other side rest on top of this black piece. So now what we need to do is we're going to press down on the bottom of the guide and we want this bubble to be to end up in the middle of these two arrows in a total circle. We don't want it to be oval. We need it to be a, as much of a circle as possible. Once, that's ha once that happens, we'll pull out the black piece here. What I like to you do is what I like to do is use two hands to kind of manipulate the bubble. It just makes it easier, but you can do whatever makes you feel comfortable. So you can see the screen touch the bubble and it's about in the center. It's as much as a bubble as it's going to be. So we'll pull out the black tab 
and then just let all the liquid adhesive totally cover the whole screen. Do not touch anything. Get your little rubber piece ready for the fingerprint sensor. So once you're sure all the adhesive has covered the whole screen, you're going to take your little fingerprint rubber piece here and we're going to put it right in between these two little arrows just above it because that's where our fingerprint sensor is going to be. And then just wait 30 seconds. Then get your UV light ready. So once the 30 seconds is up, we're going to do our first curing. We're going to cure the bottom, middle, and top for 15 seconds. All you need to do is press the button in one time, and it'll automatically count 15 seconds for you. Now I'll move to the middle. Do the same thing, 15 seconds. And then the top. Once that's done, you can remove the UV light. We're going to remove the little rubber piece and we're going to press our phone outside of the guide. I would start with the very bottom being very careful to press out the phone. So now we want to clean our phone off with an alcohol wipe. It doesn't seem like any of the adhesive has spilled out, so that's definitely a plus. And we can dry that off. And then we're going to start our last curing. So now we're going to cure the screen for 60 seconds on the bottom, middle, and top, and then we're going to do it all over again. So 60 seconds on the bottom, just press in the button two times. Then I'll move it to the middle, 60 seconds. And then the top, 60 seconds. And then do it all over one more time. Now that that's done, we can remove all the stickers from the side of the phone. And there we go. So as you saw, installation, there are some steps, but it's really not that hard. If you follow everything I did, it's going to come out perfect just like this. So it does have a cutout on the top for your front camera. The edges are also rounded off, so it's nice and smooth. As far as the touch goes, glass feels just as smooth as the glass that's on the phone. There also does seem to be a gap all the way around the screen for case compatibility. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine so far. No problems there. Yeah, fingerprints are working just fine. And if they're not, just re-register your fingerprints and turn up the sensitivity for the display and you should be fine. As you can see, it is crystal clear, nice and smooth. Everything's working fine. You can access the top, the bottom, the sides. Everything's working great. Now let's see what the screen looks like through polarized sunglasses. So that's kind of interesting. The screen kind of looks dirty. Um, but if you turn it to the side, it looks totally fine. It's just up and down that the kind of effect comes. But anyway, it, you can still see the screen pretty easily if you're looking at it dead on. So now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen's working well on the screen. There is some resistance but there are no issues that I can see whatsoever. So now let's put it in our case. So this is the Whitestone Dome Lappy case. Nice and clear. And as you can see, there's still a gap all the way around the edge of the screen. So the screen protector is not actually touching the case. There's no lifting, no bubbles. So the screen protector should be case friendly with most cases.
So it's really looking great so far. Everything's working well and it looks really good. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically regular tempered glass starts to scratch around the most hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. And we'll move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, we can see there's no scratches at the number five. There are very light at the number six and deeper at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular tempered glass. So the installation for the screen protector was pretty involved, but it's really not that hard. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It does seem to be case friendly and scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass. Now, if you end up wanting to remove the screen protector, it's really not that bad at all. It doesn't leave any residue on the screen. And as long as I've been using the Whitestone Dome with liquid adhesive, it's never ruined my screen. I have a lot of people that ask me about that, but it never has any effect on my screen. So now I'm going to show you how to remove the screen protector the easiest way that I found possible. So what I would do is get like a little plastic pick or a little piece of plastic or something, nothing metal, and you wanna like get it underneath one of the edges in the corner and just kinda just keep working at that one corner until you can get a little bit of the screen protector lifted up like I just did. So there I have one of the corners lifted. Now what you wanna do is get like a credit card, uh, maybe your fingernail, something like that, but you wanna kinda work that all the way around the edge of the screen and you can see it releasing from the phone as I'm moving down the line. Now if your screen is cracked and you want to do this just be very careful. Be patient, be slow, don't go fast because it'll crack the screen even more but just work your way all the way around the edge of the screen and just keep going until you get the screen totally released from the phone. So now all the edges are released from the phone. You can kind of start pushing more very carefully into the center of the screen and it'll slowly start to release. Until finally it totally releases and you can lift off the whole screen protector. Now, as you can see, all the adhesive is pretty much on the glass protector itself. There's really nothing on the phone except for a couple pieces of the plastic uh, little pick that I was just using, but it's really just that easy. And then you can just throw the screen protector away or do whatever you want. And here is the phone right after I took off the screen protector. As you can see, there's no damage to the screen. There's no residue and it looks totally fine. And then here we have Flow Labs One Time Pro Tempered Glass Screen Protector. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors and a guide, our installation packet, and a squeegee. So once again, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to thoroughly clean off your screen with one of the alcohol wipes, and then dry it off. And they make it super easy to install. All you need to do is take one of your screen protectors inside of the guide, making sure that the top signifier is going towards the camera on your phone, and just place this over the top of your phone and press it into place. Then hold onto your guide gently, and we're going to pull out the tab. And then just run your finger down the middle of the screen. Wait 20 seconds. Then we're going to remove the guide from our phone. Just lift up on the guide. And then peel off the top protector. And if you happen to have some bubbles like I do, you can use a squeegee to simply get those out. So just take your squeegee and then just push out the bubbles to the side. They come out very easily. And there we go, beautiful installation. No bubbles, no lifting, and it is a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover your front camera, and it looks like there is a very slight gap all the way around the phone, so it covers as much as the screen as possible, 
but still should be case friendly, which we will be testing out. As far as the touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. The edges are also rounded off, so it's nice and smooth. As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can very easily just wipe those away. So now let's test out our fingerprint. Fingerprint seems to be working just fine. And if you're having issues with your fingerprints, all you need to do is re-register your fingerprints, maybe turn up the sensitivity for your display. And if your fingers are dry like mine, you might wanna moisturize them and then they should work perfectly with the in-display fingerprint sensor. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear and it's also got anti-reflective technology. So when you're looking at your screen, you're not really seeing any reflections. Touch is working perfectly fine. You can access the top, you can access the bottom very easily, and those sides. So now let's see what the screen looks like as if you're looking at it through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect and depending on how you twist and turn the phone, it may change. But if you look at the screen dead on, it's only gonna turn like a different tint but you can still very easily see what's on the screen. Now Flowlab has also told me that because this year the tempered glass screen protectors are a lot thinner, so they work with the in-display fingerprint sensor, they weren't able to perfect the anti-rainbow effect in their screen protectors yet, but they are working on it. Now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen is working perfectly fine on the screen protector. There is a bit of resistance, but the S Pen is working perfectly fine. No issues. So now let's put the phone inside of our case. And if you're wondering, this is the Mouse Limitless 5.0 case. The screen protector does have a slight gap all the way around the screen, so it should be compatible with most cases, and it covers as much as it can without actually touching the case, which is definitely a good thing because that's less of an area for dust and dirt to collect on your screen. So it seems to fit perfectly. And then for those rear camera protectors, as you can see, it still looks like this, the phone is stock and it should be there, and it fits perfectly with inside this case. So I'm really loving everything about this screen protector so far. So now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So let's start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Go. So this screen protector lasted up until a three foot drop. And now let's move on to the scratch test. So regular tempered glass starts to scratch around Mohs hardness number six. So we're going to start off with a number five. We'll move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. And if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are ever so slight at the number six and a little deeper at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. They've also made it as close as possible that they can get it to make it case compatible, which I love. It lasted up until a three foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular tempered glass. Now let's move on to the scratch test for the camera lens protectors. So again, we're gonna start off with a number five. Then move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are a couple little scratches at the number six. And for the number seven, it's a little deeper. So scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass for the camera protectors as well. And here we have a privacy screen protector made by Zag. So the screen protector has an anti-glare matte finish and it's also antimicrobial and it works with the in-display fingerprint sensor. 
So you get one screen protector, and this is not made from tempered glass. It is going to be a thicker film type of material. You get an installation guide and some installation tools. So first clean off your screen really well with the alcohol wipe, then dry your screen off, then take your installation tray, making sure that the little top signifier is going towards the camera on your phone. We're just gonna take our phone and place it inside the guide and you can use your wipe to press down on the phone to make sure it's in place. Then take your screen protector, making sure that the little hole is going towards the camera on your phone. We're going to peel off the underside protector and then place the holes on the guide on the posts on the installation tray, making sure the screen doesn't touch the phone yet. Then take your squeegee and we're going to press down on the screen protector and just squeegee out all the way down. Try to get out any bubbles that you might see. Then take the top layer off the protector. Take your phone out of the tray and we'll take a look. So that we do have a couple bubbles on the screen protector that I see right here and maybe something right here. We'll try to get those out with the squeegee really quick. So I was able to get that bubble out fairly easily, but there's a mark on the screen protector that is not coming out. And I'm not sure what that's from because the whole screen was protected from the top protector. So not really sure why that's there. But other than that, installation was pretty easy and we do have a cutout for our front camera. As far as the feel of the screen protector, nice and smooth. And as you can see, it is a matte finish, so it keeps that glare down, which I absolutely love. There is also a pretty good gap all the way around the screen, even though the screen protector does seem to be a little bit misaligned. As you can see, there's a big gap on the bottom and the side, but not so much on the other side. So alignment is a little off. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up just very minimal fingerprints on the screen. And you will have to wipe a little bit harder than regular to get those off, but they do come away. Now let's test out our fingerprints. So fingerprints don't seem to be working right away, so let's just re-register our fingerprints. And I also have the sensitivity turned up on my display as well. Now you can see that the screen is dulled down a bit because of the privacy screen. So you might have to turn up the brightness to compensate for that. But once you do, you can see the screen very well. Touch also working perfectly fine. No issues there. So now let's re-register our fingerprints. So fingerprints went in really well, so I'm expecting the fingerprint sensor to work just fine. So we'll test that out. So not really working again. So oh, oh. it worked that time. Let's try it again. So it seems to be hit and miss. The fingerprint sensor really is not working that great, but now it is. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure what was happening there, but it seems to be working just fine. But as you saw the first couple times, it was not working. Okay, so it seems to be working just fine now. So now let's see what the screen looks like using polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, the screen is a little bit discolored. You can still see easily what's on the screen, but there is a slight rainbow effect. And let's test out our S Pen. So S Pen seems to be working just fine on the screen protector. There is a slight resistance, but it's not bad at all. Very nice. I really like these matte screen protectors. They feel really nice and they look really cool on the phone. So now let's put it in our case. So 
So the screen protector does seem to have a slight gap all the way around the screen. No lifting, no bubbles, and it doesn't seem to be touching the case at all on the sides, so it should be case friendly with most cases. And as far as any marks from the S Pen, the S Pen doesn't seem to make any marks on the screen, so that's definitely a plus too. And then for the privacy effect, if you turn your phone to the side, it's not really as good as some of the other tempered glass screen protectors that I've seen for privacy. You can also still see what's on the screen from a, a pretty good angle. So not sure what's going on there, but uh, the privacy protection doesn't seem to be as good as some of the other tempered glass. Like you, you really have to tilt the phone to make the screen disappear here. So I'm not really a big fan of that. So now let's move on to the scratch resistance. So regular film screen protectors usually start to scratch around Mohs hardness number two, which is simply just plastic. And then it gets a little worse with the number three, which is copper. So we'll start off with the number two. And then we'll move on to the number three. Yeah, so that's pretty bad. All right, so if we take a closer look, I don't think there's gonna be any scratches at the number two, but we'll wipe it down and take a look. Yeah, so no scratches at the number two, but we do have deeper grooves at the number three. So scratch resistance seems to be better than regular film screen protectors. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy, although it does seem to be uh, slightly misaligned on the phone. There was a little problem with the in-display fingerprints at first, but then it seemed to clear up somehow. So that may or may not be an issue. It also seems to work well with the S Pen. There's no drop protection because this is a film screen protector and scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular film protectors. So if you wanna lift up the screen protector, all you need to do is get one of the edges up and then peel it off your phone. And as you can see, the phone is undamaged. And then here we have the Zag Fusion XTR3 screen protector. It does have blue light filtration. It's got advanced impact technology, antimicrobial treatments, an easy installation, and it should work fine with the in-display fingerprint sensor. And here we have the Zag Fusion XTR3 film screen protector. So we get one screen protector, an installation packet, and an installation guide. So again, clean off your screen thoroughly with the alcohol wipe then dry it off, then take your installation tray, making sure the top goes towards the camera on your phone. We'll take our phone, put it inside the tray, and you can use your little wipe to kind of press down to make sure that it's seated properly inside the guide. Then take your guide, making sure the camera hole goes towards the camera hole on your phone. We're gonna press, then take your, then take your screen protector, making sure the hole of the camera goes towards the camera on your phone. We're gonna peel off the underside protector then we're gonna place the posts of the guide in the holes on the screen protector, making sure the screen protector doesn't touch the screen on your phone. Then take your squeegee, we're gonna press down on the bottom of the screen protector and just squeegee forward. Then lift up on the top portion of the screen protector and then take your phone out of the guide. And there we go, installation looks really good. The alignment on this screen protector looks much better than the privacy. There is also a cutout for your front camera. As far as the touch goes, it is nice and smooth, just like glass on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints on the screen, but you can very easily just wipe those away. Screen re looks really nice. There's that anti-reflective technology. So it kind of just mirrors. It doesn't make it kind of all bloomed up. We do have some bubbles on the bottom of the screen here that I'm gonna use the squeegee to try to get out really quick. And it looks good. So I was able to get those bubbles out really easily. So now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen writes fine on the screen protector. There is a good bit of resistance 
because it isn't glass, but S Pen is working just fine. Let's see if there's any markings from the S Pen, and it seems to be perfect. Don't see any issues there. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. Yeah, no issues there. And as you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Touch working fine. No issues with accessing anything. So now let's see what the screen looks like through the lenses of polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a bit of a rainbow effect. If you're looking at the screen dead on, it's not horrible. It just gets worse when you twist and turn the phone. But the screen protector looks really nice on the phone. Now let's put it in our case. So again, there is a good gap between the screen protector and the case for case compatibility. So it should be compatible with most cases. I also don't see any problems with the anti-reflective coating as well as the blue light filter. All the colors look pretty good. There might be a slight variation in colors, but it doesn't really bother me any if there is any. So now let's test out the scratch resistance. So again, film screen protectors typically start to scratch around the Mohs hardness number two, which is just simply plastic. And then we'll move on to copper, which is number three. So then we'll move on to a number three, which is copper. And it starts to scratch immediately. So I don't see any markings at number two, but it definitely gets deeper at the number three. So scratch resistance seems to be better than regular film screen protectors. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the S Pen and in-display fingerprint sensor. It also does seem to be case friendly. There's no drop protection because this is a film screen protector and scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular film screen protectors. Then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Ultra Glass. So we get one screen protector already in its guide and we have another screen protector inside the installation kit. You also get a squeegee on the pack of the inside tray and your installation kit with your extra screen protector. So make sure you thoroughly clean off your screen first, then dry it off. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure that the top portion of the guide goes towards the camera on your phone. Just press this into place over the top of your phone, just like that. We're gonna hold on to the guide and we're gonna pull out the little tab on the bottom here. Let it sit for a couple seconds while the screen protector adheres to your phone. Then we're gonna remove the guide from the phone and then peel off the top protector. So first, first look, installation looks flawless. <laughs> There's no bubbles, everything fits perfectly on the phone and we do have a cutout for our front camera. As far as touch, Super smooth, feels just like the glass on the phone. Very nice, and again, we do have a slight gap all the way around the phone for case compatibility. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but you can very easily just wipe those away. Very nice. The edges of the glass are also rounded off. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working really well. Yeah, no problems there. And as you can see, the screen is crystal clear. God, it's so smooth. Works really well. No problems there. Now let's see what the screen would look like through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is some rainbow effect. It's not too bad when you're looking at the phone face on, but when you start to twist and turn the phone, it gets worse. So it's not too bad. I mean, because typically you're looking at your phone uh, head on anyway. So let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working fine on the screen. It is pretty smooth. There is only a slight bit of resistance. No issues there. 
So let's put our phone inside of our case. And I don't see any lifting. There is still a slight gap all the way around the screen, not even touching the case, no lifting, no bubbles. So it should be compatible with most cases. So I am very happy with this screen protector so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Four feet. Five feet. Six feet. So it did make a little mark on the screen, but no cracks yet. Seven feet. Eight feet. So this screen protector lasted up until an eight foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically regular tempered glass starts to scratch around the most hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with the number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are ever so slight at the number six and deeper at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was super easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It does also seem to be case friendly. It lasted up until an eight foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And here we have the Spigen Glass TR Easy Fit. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors with built-in guides and a squeegee and an installation packet. So first make sure you thoroughly clean off the screen with the alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take one of your screen protectors, making sure the top goes towards the camera on the phone. We're gonna peel off the protective back. Then just place this whole thing over the top of your phone. Slide your finger down the middle of the, the guide. Wait 30 seconds, then hold down on the guide and we're gonna peel up on the sticker in the middle. Press down in the middle of the guide, lift up on the guide, and then peel up the top protective layer. If you see any bubbles or anything, you can use that squeegee to get them out, but it, it looks like a perfect installation. I don't see any bubbles whatsoever. It's also a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover your camera. There is also a pretty good gap all the way around the screen for case compatibility. As far as touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone, and the edges are also rounded off as well. Now let's test out our fingerprint sensor. Fingerprint sensor seems to be working just fine. No issues there. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Touch working perfectly fine. No problems there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen works really well on the screen. There is a slight bit of resistance, but I don't see any issues there. Now let's see what the screen looks like through the lenses of a polarized sunglass. As you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect, but it's definitely not horrible. Now let's put our phone inside a case. So I don't see any lifting. There is still a slight gap around the phone, so it's not touching the edges of the case. So the screen protector should be case friendly with most cases. And as for fingerprints, I do see some fingerprints on the screen. Let's see how easily they wipe away. So it does look like you're gonna have to wipe the fingerprints away just a little bit harder than some of the other tempered glass screen protectors, but they do still wipe away. So everything's looking great so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go, two feet. Moving on to three feet. Four feet. 
four feet. So this screen protector only lasted up until a four foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. We'll move on to a number six. And then finally, number seven. So if we take a closer look, we can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at the number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also seems to work well with the S Pen and in-display fingerprint sensor. It also seems to be case friendly. It only lasted up until a four foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Gadetal. So we get three tempered glass screen protectors, an installation guide, two tempered glass rear camera protectors, and our installation tools. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to clean off the screen really well with an alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take your installation guide, making sure the top goes towards the camera on your phone. We'll press this into place. Take one of your screen protectors, peel off the protective layer underneath and then place it inside the guide. Run your finger down the middle. Push down on the screen of the phone, lift up on the guide, and then remove any bubbles you might see on the screen. I do have a little bubble on the side that I'm just gonna use a squeegee that I had to get out. You can use your finger or a credit card. And it came out very easily. So installation was pretty easy. I don't see any bubbles, no lifting. There's also a cutout for your front camera as well. As far as the touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. For fingerprints, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints on the screen, but you can very easily just wipe those away. Very nice. The edges of the glass are also rounded off. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working so far. No problems with fingerprints. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear. No problems with touch. Everything seems to be working just fine. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen works perfectly fine with the screen protector. There is a slight bit of resistance but working good. Now let's take a look at what the screen looks like through the lenses of polarized sunglasses. As you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect if you twist and turn the phone, but if you're looking at it dead on, it's really pretty clear. Let's put it in our case. There is still a slight gap all the way around the phone for case compatibility. It's not actually touching the case. There's no lifting, no bubbles. So it should be case friendly with most cases. So now let's install the rear camera protectors. So make sure you clean off your camera lenses really well, then dry them off. Then take your camera lens protector, put it the way that the camera lenses are on the back of the phone. We're gonna peel off the back protector and then just place this over your camera lenses and press them into place. And there you go. Now, I don't think it looks as good as the single camera lenses on the phone, but it is gonna protect your lenses and it doesn't add much height to the camera lenses either. So let's test out our camera on our phone. So it does look pretty clear to me. I don't think you're gonna have any issues with taking pictures. And I think it looks pretty good. Then let's test out the scratch resistance. So we're gonna start off with a number five, and then move on to a number six, and then a number seven. And if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So again, scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. Now let's see how it fits inside of our case. So 
So it seems to fit perfectly inside this case, but you're only gonna be able to use this protector with cases that don't have the individual cutouts for the camera and have this nice big cutout for your camera lenses. So that's just something to keep in mind, but it should be case friendly with these types of cases. All right, so far so good. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving on to three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet, seven feet, seven feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a seven foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around the most hardness number six. So we're going to start off with the number five. We'll move on to a number six. And then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasted up until a seven foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And then here we have clear tempered glass by AM Film. So we get two clear tempered glass screen protectors with guides, two tempered glass rear camera protectors, two installation packets, and two dust stickers. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you thoroughly clean off your screen with the alcohol wipe, dry it off, then take one of your screen protectors, peel off the underside protector, and just place this over the top of your phone with the camera hole cover cut out towards the camera on your phone. Then simply run your finger down the middle and the screen should start to adhere to your phone. Then push down on the phone, lifting up the guide and we'll take a look at the installation. So installation <laughs> looks flawless. There's no bubbles, no lifting. There is also a cutout for the front camera on your phone. As far as the touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glasses on the phone. And the edges of the glass are also rounded off. As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up minimal fingerprints and you can very easily just wipe those away. That's super simple. Now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. No problems there. As you can see, the screen is also crystal clear and that is super smooth. Now let's take a look and see what the screen would look like if you were to look at it through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a rainbow effect if you don't twist and turn the phone, the rainbow effect isn't that bad, but it's still a little bit on the bluish tint side. Now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine on the screen. There is a bit of resistance. It's not super bad though. Working perfectly fine. Let's put it in our case. seems to fit the case perfectly. There is a slight gap all the way around the screen, so it should be compatible with most cases, and it's not touching the edges of the case either. There's no bubbles or any lifting. Looking really good so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a four foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So regular tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. Then move on to a number six. And then a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. 
So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the S Pen and the in-display fingerprint sensor. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasted up until a 4 foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. Now let's install our rear camera protectors. So thoroughly clean off your cameras, then dry them off. Then take your camera protector, line it up with the cameras on the phone. We'll peel off the backing and then place them over the camera lenses on your phone and press them into place. And you're all set. So it definitely doesn't look as good as the individual camera lenses on the phone, but it will protect your lenses and it doesn't add really any extra bulk to the phone. So let's take a look at our camera. Cameras still look nice and clear. Don't see any issues there. So you shouldn't have any issues with pictures with these protectors on your phone. And then let's move on to the scratch test. So again, we're going to start off with a number five then move on to a number six and then finally number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and about the same at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be maybe a little better than regular tempered glass. And then here we have UAG's Flex Shield Plus screen protector. So we get one screen protector, an installation packet, and an installation guide. So make sure you first clean off your screen really well with the alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take your guide, making sure the top goes towards the camera on your phone. We'll place our phone inside the guide, and you can use the little wipe to press the phone down into place. Then take your screen protector, making sure the camera hole goes towards the camera hole on the phone. We're gonna peel off the protector underneath, we're going to line up the guide holes with the screen protector holes, press them into place. Don't let the screen protector touch the phone screen yet. Then take your squeegee, press it down on the very bottom of the screen protector, and then just squeegee forward. Try to get out any bubbles you might see. So now very carefully, you're going to want to peel off the top protector on the phone, making sure that it does not take the screen protector with it. And then remove your phone from the guide. See if there's any bubbles. We do have a few over in the side here. There's one right here and then one up at the top. So we'll just use the squeegee to get those out. So I was able to get those bubbles out pretty easily. Now let's take a look at the screen. Looks pretty nice. There is a cutout for our camera as far as touch. Feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints, it seems to pick up some like minor fingerprints. And you can very easily just wipe those away. So that's definitely a plus. The edges are also seem to be chamfered. So they're pretty smooth. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. The screen is also crystal clear. Touch working perfectly fine as well. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to work fine on the screen. There is a little bit of resistance, but there's no issues with the S Pen. Now let's see what our polarized lenses look like on the screen. So that is a pretty interesting effect <laughs> that I've never really seen before. There is some sort of a pastel pattern going on. But if you look at the screen dead on, it's not super horrible. But if you start to turn the phone in different ways, the rainbow effect gets a little bit worse. So now let's put it in our case. So it does seem to be case friendly. There's a nice gap all the way around the edge. It does not touch the case itself. So there's no lifting or bubbles. So not too bad so far. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So typical film screen protectors start to scratch around a Mohs hardness number two, which is simply just plastic. And then it gets worse 
with the number 3, which is copper. So we're going to start off with the number 2. Now we'll move on to a number 3. Oof. So if you take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number two, but deep gouges at the number three. So this seems to be a little bit better than regular film screen protectors, as far as scratch resistance goes. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. There's not really any drop protection because it is a film screen protector and scratch resistance seems to be better than regular film. Then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Wiskin. So like I mentioned before, Wiskin came up with this pretty interesting way of installation for their screen protector on your phone and it seems to work out pretty good. So you get two tempered glass screen protectors. They are clear. We get some panda stickers, installation guide, our installation packet, a card, a squeegee, and how to increase the fingerprint sensor sensitivity. So here is the tray that you're going to put your phone in, but the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off your phone screen really well. Then dry off your screen. Then you're going to take your phone and place it inside the guide with the camera up towards the top of the guide here, just like that. And then take your wipe and we're just going to press the phone down into place until you hear the click. Then you're going to take one of your screen protectors. We're going to place this little nub here inside the hole at the top of the screen protector and just press it into place. Then just pull off the protector and place the other side of the guide on these posts on the screen protector, just like that. Then we're going to close up our guide then hold on to the guide and we're going to pull out the little arrow here. Then you're going to lift up on the top part of the guide, holding on to the guide itself again, and we're going to pull out the top portion of the guide. It might take a little bit of force to do. And then just push it back. Open it up, you can take off the top portion of the guide, then just move that out of the way, and then take your phone outside of the guide. We'll take a look at the screen. Installation looked pretty good. We do have some little micro bubbles that we'll try to get out. So I was able to get those bubbles out fairly easily, and this is a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover your camera at the top. As far as touch goes, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. And for fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can very easily just wipe those away. The edges of the screen are also rounded off, so it's nice and smooth. And it looks like we do have a slight gap all the way around the screen as well. Now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working good so far. No issues there. I'll do it just one more time because I didn't put my finger on the fingerprint sensor. Yeah, it's working fine. So fingerprint sensor works well. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Touch working perfectly fine. No issues with accessing anything here. Now let's see what the screen looks like under polarized sunglasses. We have like a little blue tint. If we tilt the phone, there is a a pretty good rainbow effect but if you're looking at the phone dead on it's not that bad but it is still there now let's test out our S Pen S Pen seems to be working fine with the screen protector there is a slight bit of resistance but it's not bad so no issues there now let's put it in our case Seems to fit well within our case. There is still a slight gap all the way around the phone. It's not touching the edges of the case, so there's no lifting, no bubbles. So it should be case friendly with most cases. Let's take a look at our camera. So here is our front camera. 
When I look at it, it looks pretty clear. I don't see any issues. So you shouldn't have any issues taking pictures or videos with the front camera. You just need to make sure that it's clean. So, so far so good. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Three feet. So this screen protector lasts that up until a three foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. And move on to a number six. And then a number seven. So if you take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are ever so slight at a number six and about the same at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be a little better than regular tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasted up until a three foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass. And here we have the unique knee film screen protector. So look at this box. This is probably the biggest screen protector box that I have ever seen, second to the Whiskin. So here is our installation box. Let's open this up, see what we get inside. So it looks like we get two film screen protectors. This isn't even tempered glass. All this for film, we get a squeegee, some stickers, and an installation kit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off your screen with the alcohol wipe. Then dry the screen off. Then you're going to take your installation tray. We're going to take our phone. We're going to press it inside the tray with the camera going up to the top of the guide. Take your wipe and just press the phone into place if we can. There we go. Get rid of any dust. Then take one of your screen protectors. We want to make sure this little hole in the middle goes over the little like hook on the top of your phone here. So put that over the hook just like that. And then put the little posts through the holes on the guide at the bottom here. Just like that. Press those into place. Then we're going to close up our guide. Snap it into place just like that. Then hold on the guide and we're going to pull out a little plastic tab in the bottom. Then we need to take this piece, we're going to pull it down to the bottom. Then we're going to push it back up to the top. Then open up the guide. We're going to peel up the protector. Make sure you don't take the screen protector with it when you're taking it off your phone. So be very careful. Then we can remove our phone. Put aside the guide and we'll take a look. So installation looks perfect. I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any lifting. Everything looks nice. It is a full coverage screen protector so it does cover your camera as far as touch super smooth just like the glass that's on the phone maybe even smoother than that there is a slight gap on the bottom and the top of the phone not so much on the sides though but we're going to test the case friendliness the edges are a little catchy they're not they're not rounded so your finger might catch on the edge as far as fingerprints it does seem to pick up some fingerprints on the screen but you can very easily just wipe those away. Very not. Maybe a little bit harder than regular, but they still go away fairly easily. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working well. Yeah, no problems there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen works well on the screen. There's really not any resistance. It's pretty smooth. This is probably the smoothest screen protector that I've tested so far with the S Pen. So that may or may not be good for you, but the S Pen seems to be working just fine. 
and I don't see any marks on the screen from the S Pen either. Facial recognition works perfectly fine, and you can still access everything you need to from the screen, and it is nice and clear. So now let's see what the screen looks like through polarized sunglasses. Oof. So there is a rainbow effect, and if you move your phone, it gets even worse. So yeah, um, it's just something to note that may or may not bother you, and you may not even use polarized sunglasses. Let's put the phone in our case. And it does seem to fit perfectly. There is an ever so slight gap on the edge. So the screen protector is not actually touching the edges of the case. And there's more of a gap on the top and the bottom. But this screen protector should be case friendly with most cases. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So regular film starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number two, which is simply just plastic. And then it gets worse with the number three, which is copper. So we're going to start off with the number two. And then we'll move on to the number three. So if we take a closer look, you can see that the screen protector does deform at a number two. But it seems like it's a self-healing screen protector, so these might go away with a little bit of time. But with the number three, it creates deep gashes that are definitely not going to go away. So the scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for film screen protectors. And as you can see, the marks on the screen are already kind of healing from the level two mark. So installation for the screen protector really was pretty easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. There's no drop protection because it is a film screen protector and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for film screen protectors. And then here we have Rinky's Privacy Dual Easy Film Screen Protector. So we get one film screen protector and an installation packet. So first you wanna thoroughly clean off your screen, then dry it off. Then take your installation guide. You wanna separate the top from the bottom making sure that the posts are pointing up and we're gonna use the little side that looks like a C. We're gonna press that into the bottom of our charging port, make sure that that goes flush. Then take your screen protector. We want to peel off the number one from the underside of the protector. You wanna line up the, the holes on the screen protector with the posts on the guide. I'm gonna press that into place, just like that. We'll put the piece on top, snap that into place. Then we're gonna line up the protector with the camera on the phone, just like that. Once you have that in place, you wanna place your squeegee on the screen, kind of behind the middle, just like this. We're gonna lift up on the number two. We're gonna squeegee out over the screen, just like this. We'll turn the phone around. We're gonna take off our guide take the pieces off the posts, and then pull out the guide from your phone. Then take your squeegee, again, put it behind the middle line here. We're gonna lift up on the screen protector, and we're gonna squeegee out over the top of our phone. You can try to get out any bubbles you might see. Just have some very little ones. Now once that's done, we're gonna very carefully peel up the top protector and you're all set. If there's any bubbles on the screen, you can very carefully push them out. We have some at the top here. Just very carefully kind of push that out. No problems. Everything else looks pretty good. So that was a very easy installation. I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any lifting. There is a cutout for our camera on the front of our phone. As far as touch, silky smooth, probably even smoother than the glass that's on the phone itself, which is nice. The edges are a little catchy, but because they're so thin, you might not even feel them, especially if you put a case on it. As far as fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints on the screen, and you should very easily be able to wipe those away. Let's test out our fingerprint.
Fingerprint seems to be working just fine. Perfect. Now, because this is a privacy screen, the screen might be dulled a little bit. So if you need to just turn up the brightness and you should be able to see it just fine. Touch working perfect. Everything's working. You can access the top and the bottom of the screen. I always use there. It is nice and clear, but if we turn it to the side, you can see that your screen does disappear. Very cool. So now let's see what the screen looks like looking at it through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a rainbow effect. And depending on how you twist and turn the screen, it changes colors. And if you look at it dead on, it kind of looks like a little like purplish, but you can still see what's on the screen. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working perfectly fine on the screen. It is also nice and smooth. There's really no resistance. So now let's put it into one of our rinky cases. So it seems to fit this case perfectly. There is a slight, slight gap on the top and the bottom and on the sides of the phone. It doesn't seem to touch the case. I don't see any lifting, no bubbles. So if you're gonna be using a rinky case, the screen protector should fit perfectly fine and it may fit other cases as well. All right, so far so good. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically film screen protectors start to scratch around a number two, which is simply just plastic. And then it gets a lot deeper with the number three, which is copper. So we're gonna start off with the number two. Then we'll move on to the number three. So if we take a closer look, this does seem to be a self-healing screen protector. So the scratches from the number two should start to heal and pretty much go away, whereas the three is done. There's no coming back from the number three scratch. And if I run my finger over the two, it doesn't really feel like ridges. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for film screen protectors. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It might be case friendly with other cases. It seems to come right up to the edge of the screen. There's really no drop protection because this is a film screen protector and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for film screen protectors. And here we have Mouse's tempered glass screen protector. So we get two tempered glass screen protectors, an installation guide and an installation packet. So first clean off your screen thoroughly with an alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take your installation guide, making sure that the top goes towards the camera on the phone. We'll put our phone inside the tray and you can press down with the wipes so you don't get any fingerprints on there. Then take one of your screen protectors. We're gonna peel off the underside protector and then place the holes on the screen protector along with the guide. Then take your squeegee, we're gonna press down in the middle and then just push towards the camera. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. Start in the middle and just squeegee out towards the bottom of the phone. Then very carefully peel up the top protector and then take your phone out of the tray. If you see any bubbles, you can squeegee them out. I've got just a tiny bit at the top here. But other than that, it looks like a perfect installation and the screen protector looks really nice too. There is a cutout for your camera on the front. The edges of the screen are rounded off. As far as the touch, it is nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. As far as fingerprints, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints on the screen and you can very easily just wipe those away with minimal effort. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints are working so far. No issues there. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear and touch is working perfectly fine, top and bottom. Looks really nice. Now let's see what the screen looks like as if you were looking at it through polarized sunglasses. 
So as you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect depending how you move the phone. And if you're looking at it dead on, it's fairly clear. There's just a little bit of a tint. So now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen writing perfectly fine on the screen. There is some resistance. But it seems to be writing perfectly fine on this screen. So now let's put it in our Limitless 5.0 case. And it seems to fit this case perfectly. There is a slight gap all the way around the screen for case compatibility. So it should be compatible with other cases as well. There's no lifting, no bubbles. Very nice. So I'm definitely loving the screen protector so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So let's start off at two feet. And it cracked. So this screen protector only lasted up until a two foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically regular tempered glass starts to scratch around the most hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So the installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also does seem to be case friendly with mouse cases as well as other cases too. It only lasted up until a two foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And then here we have a tempered glass screen protector by Motive. We get an installation guide, two tempered glass screen protectors, two camera protectors, and two installation packets. So first we want to thoroughly clean off our screen with the alcohol wipe, then dry it off. Then take your guide, making sure the top goes up towards the camera, press it into place. Then take one of your screen protectors, peel off the underside protector, and then place the whole screen protector inside the guide. Run your finger down the middle, press down on the guide, lift up. Then we can remove any bubbles we might see. So installation was pretty easy. The screen protector looks pretty nice. The edges of the screen are rounded off. As far as the touch, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. We also do have a cutout for our camera up at the top. There is a edge or a gap all the way around the screen for case compatibility. As far as fingerprints, it does pick up some fingerprints, but we can pretty easily just wipe those away. Just a little bit of force. There we go. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just so far. No problems there. And there you go. So fingerprints are working well. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Things working fine. No issues. Now let's take a look at the screen and see what it looks like looking at it through polarized sunglasses. As you can see, there is a slight rainbow effect. If you're looking at it dead on, it looks pretty clear. But if you start to turn the phone, you get the rainbow. Now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working fine on the screen. There is a slight bit of resistance, but S Pen working fine. Now let's put it into our clear motive case. It's great inside the case. There's still a gap all the way around the screen, so it's not actually touching the case itself, so it should be compatible with other cases as well. No lifting, no bubbles. Looking good so far. So far, so good. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So let's start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. Five feet. Five feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a five foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. Then a number six. 
and then a number 7. So if we take a closer look, you can see that there are no scratches at the number 5. There are slight at the number 6 and a little deeper at the number 7. So scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasted up until a 5 foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be a little bit better than regular tempered glass. And then here we have the Banks Glass Warrior Tempered Glass Screen Protector. We get an installation guide, one screen protector, and an installation packet. So first you want to thoroughly clean off your screen with an alcohol wipe, then dry it off, then take your installation guide, making sure the top goes towards the camera on your phone, just press this into place, then take your screen protector, peel it off the back of the plastic, and then put it inside the guide. Run your finger down the middle, press down on the phone, remove the guide, and then try to remove any bubbles you might see. I've got a couple, one in the corner and one on the side. So I was able to get those bubbles out fairly easily, and this is also a full coverage screen protector, so it does cover your selfie camera. The edges of the screen are rounded off, and there is a very slight gap all the way around the phone, so it might be case compatible. As far as fingerprints goes, it picks up very minimal fingerprints and the little smudges you can very easily just wipe those away. So now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working so far. No issues with fingerprints. As you can see the screen is crystal clear. Touch working perfectly fine. As far as the feel of the glass, feels just as smooth as the glass that's on the phone. You can easily access the top and the bottom, no problems there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working fine with the screen. There is some resistance, maybe a little more than usual, but the S Pen is working perfectly fine. Facial recognition is also working fine. Let's check out our camera. And no issues with the camera either. It looks pretty clear to me. So now let's see what the screen looks like through the lenses of a polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is some rainbow effect. And depending on how you angle the screen, it could get worse or better. If you're looking dead on, it kind of has a like a purplish kind of tinge to it. So now let's put our phone into our Banks case. This is the Armor Air. Looks really nice on the phone. If we turn it to the side, you can see that the screen protector fits pretty flush with the edges of the case. So now your phone is protected on the front, sides, and the back. So everything's looking good so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So let's start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet, four feet, five feet. So this screen lasted up until a five foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So typically tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness number six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. And we'll move on to a number six. And then finally, a number of seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are light at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It does also seem to be case friendly. It lasted up until a five foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And then here we have the Tempered Glass Privacy Screen Protector by Base. So we get one screen protector and an installation packet. So first clean off your screen with an alcohol wipe. Then take your screen protector and peel off the underside protector. And then grab onto these little wings and place it on your screen. Once it's where you want it, just run your finger down the middle of the screen protector and it should adhere to the screen. 
Then peel up on the top protector, and you're all set. So let's take a look at the screen. It does look like we have a couple bubbles. So we'll just use a squeegee to try to get these out. So I was able to get the bubbles out fairly easily. We do have a cutout for our camera. As far as the feel of the screen protector, feels nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. The edges are also rounded off. And as far as fingerprints goes, minimal fingerprints. Just a little bit of smudge and you can very easily just wipe those away. So now I'm gonna re-register my fingerprints. All right, so fingerprints are registered. Now let's test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. As you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Now, because this is a privacy screen, you might have to go in and up the brightness of your screen to compensate for the privacy screen protector, but this is what it looks like once you have a nice brightness. Everything's working perfectly fine as far as touch goes. Now let's see what the screen looks like through polarized sunglasses. There is a slight rainbow effect, but when you're looking at the screen dead on, it looks perfectly normal. Not bad. Now let's test out our S Pen. It's been working perfectly fine on the screen. There is some resistance, but the S Pen's working perfectly. And then as far as the privacy goes, if you turn your phone to the side, the screen disappears so nobody on each side of you can see what you're doing or looking at. So now let's put it in our base case. This is the Duo Hybrid case. Fits the case perfectly. We still have a gap all the way around the screen, so this is case compatible with most cases. No lifting, no bubbles, looks good. And even though we do have the screen protector on the screen, you can see that with the base case, there's still a raised edge on the top and the bottom of the case. So everything's looking great so far. And now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So here we go, two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a four foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So tempered glass starts to scratch around a Mohs hardness level six. So we're gonna start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was pretty easy. It also does seem to work well with the S Pen and in-display fingerprint sensor. It's also case friendly. It lasted up until a four foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. Then here we have Base's Clear Tempered Glass. Now let's install the Clear Tempered Glass screen protector. So we get one screen protector and an installation packet. So then take your screen protector, peel off the bottom protector of that, and then hold on to the wings to install it on your phone. Once you have it in place, just run your finger up the middle of the screen protector and then remove the top layer. So it looks like a good installation. We do have a cutout for our camera on the top there. The edges of the screen are also rounded off. As far as the touch, the screen feels just as smooth as the glass on the phone. For fingerprints, again, just minimal, minimal fingerprints, and you can very easily just wipe those away. Now let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working pretty good so far. Yep, pretty quick. Perfect. So no issues with fingerprints, and as you can see, the screen is crystal clear. Touch working fine. You can access 
the bottom and the top perfectly fine too. And as you can see, the screen is also crystal clear and touch working perfectly fine. You can access the top, the bottom very easily, and the sides. Now let's see what the screen looks like through polarized sunglasses. So you can see there is a little bit of a rainbow effect depending on how you look at the screen. And if you're looking at it dead on, it's pretty clear. So let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working fine. There is some resistance, but the S Pen is working without issue. Now let's put it in our dual hybrid case. Again, there is a gap all the way around the screen, so the case, the screen protector is case compatible. And if we look at the side of this case, even with the screen protector on it, again, we still have a raised edge on the top and the bottom. So everything's looking good so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. All right, so we're gonna start off at two feet. Moving on to three feet. Moving on to four feet. Five feet. Five feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a five foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So again, we're gonna start off with a number five. Then we'll move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. So if you take a closer look, you can see there's no scratches at the number five. There are slight at a number six and about the same at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also seems to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasts set up until a five foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. And then here we have a matte tempered glass screen protector by Case Leary. We get an installation guide, two rear camera protectors, an installation packet, and two tempered glass screen protectors. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to clean off your screen really well with the alcohol wipe. Then take your guide, making sure the top goes towards the camera on the phone and just press this into place. Then take your screen protector, peel off the back cover, and then place the protector inside the guide. It should start to adhere to the screen and you can also help it by moving your finger across the screen itself. Then press down on the screen and lift up the guide. And we'll see if we have any bubbles. Just a couple that I can push out with my finger. So installation was really easy. It looks great. There's no bubbles, nothing underneath the screen. There is a cutout for your front camera. As you can see, it cuts down on the glare because of the matte look. It's also super smooth. It might actually be smoother than the glass on the phone. It feels really good. The edges are also rounded off. As for fingerprints, it does still pick up some fingerprints. Let's see how easily we can wipe those away. Super easy. No problems there. Let's test out our fingerprint. Fingerprint working perfectly fine. As you can see, the screen is nice and clear and it cuts down on that glare. Touch working perfectly fine all over the screen as well. Very nice. Now let's see what the screen looks like through polarized sunglasses. So as you can see, there is a rainbow effect. The more you move the screen, the worse it gets. And even if you're looking at it dead on, it's still like a shade of purple but you can still see what's on the screen. Now let's test out our S Pen. S Pen works well on this screen. There is a slight bit of resistance, but working perfectly fine. No issues there. So now let's test out our camera. camera looks really clear to me. I don't see any issues. So you shouldn't have any issues with your videos or your foot, your selfies. Let's put it in our case. So 
seems to fit well inside of a case and should be case friendly. With most cases, there's still a gap all the way around the screen. It's not touching the edge of the case. No lifting, no bubbles. So again, it should be case friendly with most cases. So I'm really liking the screen protector so far. Now let's move on to the scratch and the drop test. So we're gonna start the test at two feet. Here we go, three feet. Four feet. Five feet. Five feet. So this screen protector lasted up until a five foot drop. Now let's move on to the scratch test. So we're gonna start off with a number five. And move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see that there's a, a little mark at the number five. There's ever so slight at the number six and a, just a little deeper at the number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be a little bit less better than regular tempered glass, but it's not horrible. So installation for the screen protector was really easy. It also does seem to work well with the in-display fingerprint sensor and the S Pen. It also seems to be case friendly. It lasted up until a five foot drop and scratch resistance seems to be a little bit less better than regular tempered glass. So now let's install the rear camera protector. So again, you wanna thoroughly clean off your camera lenses, then line up your camera protector with the lenses on the back of the phone. We'll peel off the backing place the protectors over your lenses and then press them into place. We'll wipe them off and we'll take a look. So it looks pretty clean. In my opinion, it doesn't look as good as the individual camera lenses, but it is gonna offer you some, your lenses some protection and it doesn't add much bulk to the phone. So let's take a look at our camera. So looking at the rear cameras, it looks pretty clear to me. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues with taking pictures or videos with this protector on your phone. And then let's test out the scratch resistance. So again, we're gonna start off with a number five and move on to a number six. And then finally, a number seven. So if we take a closer look, you can see there are no scratches at the level five. There are slight at a number six and a little deeper at a number seven. So scratch resistance seems to be pretty standard for tempered glass. So if you guys made it this far with me, thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. And if there was a screen protector that you didn't see in this video that you'd like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments below. Now I'm gonna let you know which screen protectors were the absolute best out of all the ones we've tested here today. And I do urge you to check out the other screen protectors that I did reviews on. Just because they didn't make it to the absolute best doesn't necessarily mean that they're not any good. So the three screen protectors that I have here were the absolute best. They were very easy to install. They worked very well with the in-display fingerprint sensor, the S Pen. They were also all case friendly. They did really good on the drop test and scratch resistance was either good for tempered glass or better. So first up, we have the Taurus Diamond Shield. This screen protector actually survived an eight foot drop and never even cracked. It did make a little de deformation on the glue on the underside with the screen protector. But again, like I said, it never cracked. So if you're looking for the absolute best drop protection, I would definitely recommend the Taurus Diamond Shield. Next up, we have the Ultra Glass Tempered Glass Screen Protector. Again, this one, lasted up until an eight foot drop. It did crack, but it lasted up until eight feet. And then for a close third, we had the Gadadol tempered glass screen protector. This screen protector lasted up until seven feet, which is still pretty good. Nobody's gonna be really standing up seven feet and dropping their phone, unless you happen to be that tall. <laughs> So I'm really curious to know out of all the screen protectors I've tested here today, which one was your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments below. And if this video helped you out at all, it would really help out my channel if you gave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And also liking the video lets me know that you like what I'm doing here and you want me to continue making videos just like this in the future. I'd also recommend checking out my best and worst cases video for the brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra. And you can see that by clicking on the video you see on your screen right now. Thank you everybody for all your support. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.